this notion of distribution, it doesn't exactly work in the same way that it used to. All the rules are kind of broken. People are starting in all different ways to sort of build audience, which builds momentum. So their their crowdfunding or their you know their crowdfunding, which if someone funds your movie, even if it's a dollar, they're really interested in seeing that it gets done and they become an audience. You know, where people, are, filmmakers, and media advocates are figuring out all new ways of distributing work, but it always comes back down to who is your movie for, who is your primary audience, who's your secondary audience, who really needs it, who sees himself in your work, who um, needs this movie because it will help them translate a story that's happening in their lo locale. We go out of our way to find all of those, those people that are either doing the work on the ground, shaping, taking those ideas and shaping them and turning them into policy, who might be writing about it um, in different ways, in a more popular way, and not necessarily you know, for the news. Um, and we find out, you know, sort of where are the issues, what's going on, what kind of story really needs to be out there right now, what kind of platforms do I as a storyteller have that will be useful to you and relevant to you and could offer you the kind of momentum and balance that you need to get your ideas out there. Because ultimately we're really interested in making nonfiction good storytelling to support a progressive, um, more equitable world in which we live in. The filmmaker generally has a point of view and at the point at which they start to engage with audiences, even if the movie is a little on the gray side and leaves a lot of room for interpretation, it doesn't mean that the filmmaker doesn't have a point of view. So when someone will, when a journalist will turn to them and say, why did you do this and what's going on in your life that pushed you to do this, they're going to be able to say that. So this audience building, audience building is this new, new forms of distribution and not just relying on the big, the big networks to take your stuff or HBO or um, the Sundance Channel or POV or Independent Lens. I mean, we all want our stuff to get out there. But um, the truth is, they choose your work because you can prove that there's an audience that wants it, there are specific audiences that need it, there are people on the ground who are linked to lots and lots of audience, i.e., people with big NGOs and nonprofits who will say, when this movie comes out, I'm going to. I'm going to email, call, send a special letter to the, my two million members of the Sierra Club. Maybe that's special interest. Maybe that's a niche audience. And I'm going to tell them that this movie about water contamination um, on, on, um, on army sites all over the country is going to be on television. And I'm going to tell them to do two things. I'm going to encourage them to watch it. I'm going to encourage them to have a house party and have people sit people from their neighborhood, people from their community, maybe their decision makers sit and watch it together. And when the lights come up and they wonder what to do, I'm going to make sure that they have a message from the filmmaker. And I'm going to give them what I think is a good to do. I'm going to tell them to type in their zip code and find out how close, what's the closest military site and try to figure out what kind of toxic chemicals or a plume or if the water's contaminated is sort of emanating from this place. And then I'm going to give them an address in Washington, D.C., and a postcard that they could send, that they could personalize if they want to, that says, you know what, it's time for the EPA to hold the military, the military's feet to, um, to, to toxics and make sure that they have to toe the line just like everybody else, because I create partnerships with organizations that are concerned about water, concerned about chemical security that are con you know, concerned about children's health and environmental health and justice, who are concerned about whether the EPA has teeth or cap teeth or braces. Yes. Now, I don't know if that's what you all do, but if you don't, as a filmmaker, make those alliances, whether they're really formal or they're informal, if you don't listen to the needs of the people that are your niche audience and really build that into your, either your filmmaking and your narrative or your website, or your engagement strategy, chances are you're going to have a movie that you made in the vacuum of an editing room. And it might be OK, but it might not be great.